Hi, my name is Mike with Side Effects, and today we'll be going over the color node. So let's get started. Drop down a geometry container, hop inside, and give yourself some color. Now right off the bat you'll see it's throwing an error at you, and this is because if you mouse over the input, you can see that it's expecting some geometry to color. So let's give it what it wants, and drop down a pig head. Give Houdini some time to think, turn off the shader, and plug it in. And nothing has changed, but if you were to come down to the color section and change this to something like red, there you go. Your pig is red and hop into the geometry spreadsheet and see you've been given a color attribute on your points. Now color also supports Houdini's group functionality, so if you only wanted to color a specific portion of your geometry, let's say the pig eye is in this case, you can see that that works perfectly fine. Now down here you can see a checkbox that it's titled delete all existing color attributes, and this is fairly self-explanatory. If you have any color attributes on your incoming geometry, this will wipe them clean before performing any operations down here. So let me give you an example of when that might be useful. Let's say you want to apply the color red to every single point, and then much further down the pipeline, you want to apply the color blue to every single primitive. Now you'll notice that even though we've applied the color blue to the primitives, and that it is showing up in the spreadsheet, that it is in fact being overridden by the color red that we earlier applied to the points. And so rather than backtrack up the pipeline and find the offending color node and bypass it, you can simply check this box and it'll keep things nice and clean for you. Beneath that is the, pr or the class, and that simply tells Houdini which class of geometry you want to apply the attribute to. You can choose between detail, primitive, point, or vertex. Beneath that is the color type, and this controls the method of how the color is applied to your geometry. So right now we're simply applying the color blue to every single primitive. It is a constant color. It's very straightforward. Beneath that is the bounding box. And what this does is, in this case, it applies a color to every single primitive based on its location in the relative bounding box of the overall geometry. So let me give you an example of what that means. Let's drop down a bound sop, plug it in, and template that. And you can see here a visual representation of the bounding box of your geometry. As it gets further to the right, or further along the x value rather, it gets more red. As it gets further along the y value, it gets more green. And as it gets further along z, it gets more blue. And then you can see these colors blending together where they should and giving you a nice rainbow pattern. And so that's what's happening when you use the bounding box color type. Let's get rid of that. Beneath bounding box is random, and this does exactly what you'd think. It assigns a random color to each of the specified pieces of geometry. In this case, primitives. It also works for points and vertices. Beneath random is ramp from attribute, and what this does is it takes an incoming attribute and remaps it along your specified color ramp. And so let me give you a better example of what that does. Let's give ourselves a sphere, change it to polygon, drop down a copy and transform node, plug it in, let's give ourselves, let's say, five spheres. And now we're also going to want to give ourselves a copy number. Now if we jump into the geometry spreadsheet, you can see in the primitive level that this simply numbers each sphere. So the first copy is zero, all the way to the last copy, which is four. Now we drop down a color node, plug it in, change this to ramp from attribute, match up the class to where the attribute is, in this case it would be primitive, and then type in your attribute, in this case copy num. And right off the bat you can see that nothing has happened, and that's because I forgot to translate. There we go. There we go. And so now you see that only the left sphere is black, and that's because the range of the attribute doesn't match the range of the actual attribute. So let's line that up to something like 4, and there you have it, a nice gradient going from black to white. Let's make this a bit something more visible, like red to blue, and there you go. You can come in here and add additional colors if you want. Now the last color type is random from attribute, and this functions much the same as random does, except it allows you to assign an attribute as a seed that will give you those random colors. So let me show you what I mean. Let's drop down a box ourselves a scatter. We're going to fracture this boss box to get many pieces. Let's change this number to something more manageable, like 50. Plug it in. And there you have it. Your box has been fractured. And if you come into the geometry spreadsheet, you'll see that it has given you a name attribute. 
for each broken piece, going from 49 all the way back down to zero. So you can drop down a color node, plug it on in, and again, you have to match the class to where the attribute is. In this case, it would be primitive again. Change this to random from attribute, and type in name, and there you go. Each primitive with a matching name attribute has been assigned a matching color. So now this allows you to easy, easily visualize each individual piece in your fractures. And this has been the color node. Thank you for watching.